Okay, and we're live. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, let me just double check to make sure that everything is snazzy and working as intended. Uh, we can throw it up onto Twitter. How's that sound? I think that sounds pretty good, right? Okay. Uh, all right, I'm capturing footage of the DMR and talking about the next evolution video. Come join. All right, sounds good. Asix is here, Big Cameron, Frozen Fire is here. Always good to see you, friend. Hey, late night, been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Bad, boring gun, BR better, says Prince. Well, dep depends on who you ask. People get really heated with those uh, DMR discussions, don't they? Oh no. Oh no, my webcam is not on. That's not good. Uh, that's actually really bad. <laughs> really? The webcam's not working? Um, let me see if I can turn it on. That's absolutely not what I intended to do, but sources uh let's see video capture device i think that's what it is where i can find it at least yeah the webcam is is gonzo uh do you guys mind no webcam for this stream if you guys don't mind i guess we could make it work all right br is my beloved but i really like the dmr um, this is the first live I've been to. What's up? Not much. We're currently uh, capturing some DMR footage uh, and talking about the DMR. It's role in the sandbox, preparing for the evolution of Halo. Uh, I currently actually need to gather some good footage of the DMR in Halo 4. Uh, which is a lot harder than it sounds when you've got like that internal pressure to perform. It also seems like, at least on the MCC, uh, most people gravita gravitate towards the battle rifle, just since, just since it's the easier weapon to use. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, We need to see your handsome face. Well, perhaps I can turn on my handsome face uh, after this here multiplayer match. Uh, tap going through settings and show the DMR. Tap going through settings. Um, I prefer the Halo 2 Magnum over the DMR. Is, it, is that a joke? I think that's a joke. I'm taking that as a joke. Infinity Slayer. Infinity Slayer. All right. Eliminate Let's see what we can get done. I also probably should put this to 60 frames per second. That way it doesn't slow down my PC. Uh, how have you guys been doing, by the way? I've been really enjoying my sabbatical uh, from Halo Infinite, that is. Oh. See, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty. He's above me, isn't he? Okay. Oh no, and he has an overshield. Buff commando nerf battle rifle fight me. Uh, so you're telling me you're working on another ASMR video for Halo fans. I am currently. Uh, the, the evolution of Halo's DMR is currently underway. I've been working in After Effects to create some animated cards for it and stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. Well, nothing much has changed in Halo. That's what I assumed. To be honest, the model for the DMR in Halo 4 is really good, better than the derpy Reach Scope. I actually don't mind the Reach Scope. I like the Reach Scope quite a bit, but yeah, the DMR model in Halo 4 is also a banger. I really, the DMR is one of those weapons where I don't think it's really ever looked bad. Uh, Halo 5 is maybe the closest to one that I don't like the look of, but that's mostly just because of like small aesthetic choices. Like what they did was they took this model and they lowered that front sight 
uh, as well as got rid of the ammo counter, which appears to be an attachment of sorts that you can slide onto the railing. Uh, so it's mostly just like the configuration of the DMR that I have issue with. Yeah, the DMR has always been a, a pretty good looking gun. Uh, as far as its utility in the sandbox, that's a completely n other uh, discussion. Because uh, depending on the game, the DMR is like a completely different gun. Probably the the biggest parity between uh, DMR types, I'd say, was maybe the Halo Reach one and the Halo Infinite one. No cam. Yeah, uh, babe, I forgot to turn in. Turn turn in. I forgot to turn on my webcam, uh, so I'm actually going to do that after this multiplayer match. Is done. Uh, that way I can emote and gesticulate my hands as I speak for dramatic effect. There we go. Yeah, it's... The time to kill at least seems about on par with the DMR, like, er, battle rifle. Almost exactly. And the battle rifle, at least, it, it has those extra shots because it's a burst weapon, so I'm... I can't tell if it's a, a quirk of the... Uh, MCC version, because I recall on the 360 at least the DMR was was way, way, way overtuned. And then I know on the MCC version at least there is some funkiness with the frame rate. Uh, just because the higher your frame rate, the uh, faster your weapons will actually fire. Uh, I've never tried the DMR in Halo Infinite. Uh, Saw would be nice in Infinite. Halo 4 DMR was clearly better. It had more bloom. More bloom. As in, like, it, the spread was even wider? Man, I gotta get my, uh, my, my Halo mindset back right now. Because I feel like I'm getting shot from all directions. Let's try hopping up here for a second. Uh, Halo 4 DMR overpowered for Battle Rifle. I, I'll try to interpret that. I am assuming you mean that it was overpowered, same with the Halo 4 Battle Rifle. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. off those two people um, will you ever cover the DMR skins for the for the DMT in destiny DMR skins there's DMR skins in destiny I know that the battle rifles in destiny it's one of my favorite weapons in the game but oh boy I didn't did they add the DMR back as some kind of like throwback thing uh, Halo Infinite DMR would be very good for the campaign yeah, but, you know, they're not going to add it to the campaign. Um, uh, I just noticed the Halo 4 DMR only has 14 rounds. Yeah, it's one down from Halo Reach. Um, and if I remember right, Halo Reach, during its development, it had 12 rounds per magazine. And then uh, shortly before the public beta, they upped the ammo count. Uh, and I think the ammo count was actually a... 14? Somebody could correct me. But the DMR has always had like a super varied uh, ammo count. Dead Man's Tail has a skin that makes it look like a DMR. It was part of the same update that added the battle rifle. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, I'm going to take a look then. Uh, wh what is the skin called? Because that is, that is a valuable, valuable piece of information. Was it deliberate? Or is it more of like those uh, Destiny fans trying to see something that probably wasn't intentional? Kind of wish they added something more interesting than the Bandit Halo Infinite. I mean, the Bandit is neat, but I wanted old weapons. Yeah, well, you know. I feel like we all want it a little bit more for Halo Infinite. Uh, 
I thought it had 14 in the reach beta. That that might have been. It might have had 14 in the reach beta. And if it did, that's actually uh, good to know. Okay, I am going to quickly plug in the webcam. And I am picking up the microphone right now. You guys cannot see it, but hopefully you can hear movement happening. And we are going to take a trip beneath, uh, beneath my desk uh, where we can find where the... Uh, where the webcam USB is. I found it. Okay. Don't worry, guys. I can't see the chat, but I assume there are lovely words of encouragement, uh, words of inspiration. Um, okay. Webcam should be plugged in. Okay. We return. We return above the desk. And now, and now we can turn on the webcam. Uh... Video capture device, add source, webcam. Come on, come on, where's the webcam? I'm currently searching for it, okay? It's gotta be around here somewhere. I literally see the light on. It's right there and it is turned on. Uh, all we need to do is get, get it to recognize. There it is. Hi, all of you. <laughs> uh, I did not mean to make this so large. So let me adjust the size quickly. Wahoo! Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. Hey, all of you. How are you all doing? Oh my god, the next match has started. Just in time. Um, uh, sorry, going to repeat my question. Does Bloom refer to spread increase per shot or base spread? Uh, spread increase per shot, I'd say. Uh, we could say, like, a recoil spread, but I feel like Bloom is just, like, the, the generic term everyone uses. Um, hey, Mr. Nowhere is here. Welcome back, Mr. LNG. Long time no super chat. Uh, it's good to see you, Mr. Nowhere. <laughs> it's very good to see you, friend. I appreciate the $50. I really appreciate it. That's very kind of you. Yeah, Mr. Nowhere. It's, it's good to see you, man. It's actually good to see all of you. Uh, but how are you doing, Mr. Nowhere? How are things going on your end? I hope things are going okay. Uh, let's look up currently that DMT. Okay, here we go. Destiny. Destiny. Destiny 2. DMT? DMR skin? Okay, one of them looks like a DMR, you guys said. Which one is it that looks like... Is it... Is it that? Is that the one that's supposed to look like a DMR? Hmm. Okay, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to need to stare at it a little bit longer, but I might recognize it. Hey, QAlter just gifted one late night gaming membership. That's really kind of you, QAlter. Good on you, man. Hey, Pink Guy1313 was the one who got it. Yo, it's cream and cheese. It is indeed cream and cheese. Uh, you can thank Rebecca for that. She was, uh, she was the, the mastermind, the brainchild behind, uh, my Google Chrome picture. Uh, which I'm probably gonna have to update it with new, new, uh, cute, cute critters, creatures, happy things. Okay. We're off to a good start. Uh, okay, so this is Forge, Forge, uh, Forge Island, I think it's the map. Okay. The reference being DMR, Dead Man's Revenge. Dead Man's Revenge. Okay, got it. All right. Yeah, that's a little bit on the nose. I'll take a look, okay? Because that's not an accident. That it's called the DMR, Dead Man's Revenge skin. Okay, I'll take a look at it, all right? And you said it, it arrived with the, uh, with the Destiny 30, the Bungie 30th anniversary, right? Damn, okay. 
Man, I'm so behind. Okay, so... For some reason, I bought Witch Queen on the Xbox, but I don't have Beyond Light on the Xbox. But I do have Beyond Light on Steam. So I'm currently in a situation where I what I don't have is Lightfall right now. So I'd need Lightfall and Beyond Light if I wanted to continue my Destiny journey on the Xbox. Or I'd need Witch Queen and Lightfall if I wanted to continue it on Steam. And I'm at the point now where just for like the sake of convenience, I might want to get them on Steam. But I can't justify, I can't justify $100 in order to get Lightfall and the Witch Queen on Steam, you know, to catch myself up. And then f beyond that, getting the 30th anniversary edition, uh, that way I can take a look at some of those Bungie skins then, if some of them do in fact call back to Bungie's past for evolution video purposes. God, man. I continue to wait for the day that Q-Alter memberships pick me. <laughs> this frozen fire. Uh, Destiny 2 expansions are weird with crossplay. Yeah, I... Man, yeah. I really, really, really wish I could just buy it on one system, but I, I know why it's not that case, and I, I honestly should, should have bought the Witch Queen just on Steam. Do you play COD? Yeah, of course I do. Everybody does. Um, are you not wanting to use cross-platform? I do use a uh, cross-platform uh, for Destiny. I've got it installed on both my computer and the Xbox. Just unfortunately, Lightfall is the first DLC where I've actually had to fall behind. It's just not in the budget right now. Um... There's a ghost skin for the Sparrow, too. Yeah, see, I saw that. I'd love to have all of that stuff for evolution purposes. Because some of the, the crossovers that they've done are really cool. It, it is a cool idea, the way Bungie will... They, rather than, like, just straight up have, like, a Magnum, like a Halo Magnum, they'll take the Halo Magnum's, like, silhouette and they'll destinyify it. Same with, like, the Battle Rifle or the Beam Rifle. Not beam rifle, focus rifle, I should say. Um, Q Alter was gifted one late night gaming membership to Abola. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, I suppose you could say the LNG light fell off. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Which Lightfall's apparently, like, story aside, it's not bad. You know, huge asterisks uh, when it comes to the story. Do you play on PC or Xbox? I switch. I switch uh, between the two. Uh, definitely helps now that I have the Xbox in the same room. Because now that uh, my computer is starting to get uh, increasingly more, more optimized around the editing process, uh, I have started to dabble in the Xbox a bit more. Also, it you know it doesn't help that like the GTX 1080 Ti, it's it's starting to show its age with modern games. Destiny is too much Marvel humor. Uh, Marvel humor for Destiny. Yeah, De Destiny 2 Lightfall, that's probably one of the biggest things that was kind of like a oof. Oof was like the misfired humor. Uh, he plays on the Switch. I do play on the Switch. I like the Switch. <laughs> Stop making fun of the Switch. The Switch is a pretty damn good system. Halo in 2023 is a joke, but Doom, Doom is eternal. Well, Do Doom, uh, Doom is indeed eternal, but something I didn't even realize is that the Doom community had their, their, like, apocalypse, right? They had a bit of a, bit of an apocalypse, I should say, uh, 
I bought the season pass years ago for Doom Eternal, and I beat the first DLC. I didn't actually get around to ever trying the second DLC, but I guess consensus within the Doom community is that they 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 did not hit. Is that right? How are you liking Premiere Pro so far? Dude, I'm loving Premiere Pro. Uh, I am learning new stuff every single day about Premiere Pro. Uh, things that I didn't know were possible in video editing software. There's some stuff, some organizational stuff that I wish was a little bit more like Vegas, but that might just be biased. That might just be me, like, kind of like, I, I need to get out of the Vegas mindset and then, uh, you know, I'll see what they were doing, see why they organized it and structured it that way. But it is getting a lot easier. Um, you guys probably saw the weapon trailer that I edited. That was like, I guess like the first really intensive project that I've ever edited together in Premiere Pro. And obviously there's still a lot more learning uh, to be done, but I'm, I'm really happy with the flexibility of it. Here, this is what we are going to do. I am going to switch over to keyboard and mouse. That way it's a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, put Steam on the Switch. Exactly, exactly. Surprised you didn't swap to DaVinci Resolve instead. Well, the reason I went to Adobe Premiere is because I didn't know that all the editors are currently talking about uh, DaVinci Resolve. What's DaVinci Resolve, I had the chance to talk to one guy about it who's a, a principal cinematographer. Um, he said that it, there are a lot of really good AI tools in DaVinci Resolve that kind of like automatically color correct. Is that, cur is that right? Is that why everybody's kind of gravitating towards DaVinci Resolve? Um, the Dead Man's Revenge DMR skin was supposed to be a direct call to the Halo DMR. Also, Chris Proctor from the weapons team said they had the DMR in mind when making the DMT. It's the best hip fire scout in Destiny 2. Something54321, that's your name? Um, I, I didn't just forget your name. That is awesome information. Do you, do you follow me on Twitter or perhaps are you in the Discord? By any chance, could you send me any information you have about it? Because that needs to be included. That needs to be included as information uh, in this DMR video. Uh, do a British grunt voice? <laughs> a British grunt voice. Um, what would he say? Damn it. What would he say? I can't talk. I'm still on Vegas. Oh, my God. oh, you're still on Vegas as well? Well, v Vegas isn't bad. Just the problem is it's so, so buggy. So buggy, dude. That is one thing that I appreciate about... Uh, what is going on? What's going on with my mouse? What on air? Okay. That is one thing that I appreciate so far about uh, Premiere Pro is significantly less crashes than when I worked on uh, on uh, Vegas. Hello, Govna. Is that no? That that sounded more just like me moving metal. That wasn't a very good grunt voice. Let me try him. 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 Starship. Green man. Hello, governor. Nah, I can't do it. Sorry, it's a little bit rusty right now. I apologize. That was it was humiliating. Um. Is this Halo Four? This is Halo Four. <laughs> Oi, bruv! Get off it! Yeah, that just sounds like a squeaky little British man. Uh, some could say Luke. Come on. Right. There he goes. Everyone should do an entire uh, Winston Churchill speech. Q Alter just gifted another membership. This was to JXGR. Good enough. 
Yeah, good enough, right? It's unfortunate because grunts, I don't think they probably could translate into a British accent, right? I think grunts are so associated with, like, Joe Staten's raspy squeakiness. Playing Hid Xperia right now to start more community drama. <laughs> oh, pinging him. <laughs> See, I can tease Luke because he and I are friends. Oh. Yeah. The Halo 4 shotgun looks so weird. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not pretty, but <laughs> at least it gets the job done. At least Halo 4 has a shotgun. What what do you guys think about Okay, so the DMR I haven't gotten a chance to play Halo Infinite because of lack of interest. How is... I saw that they, they apparently did DMR starts for Big Team Battle. And it's it's been widely praised, I guess it's safe to say, right? What do you guys think about uh, the DMR in Big Team Battle? The biggest win that I can think of for having the DMR is, like, 343, they're not fixing the battle rifle. They're not making it more, you know, mechanically interesting. So... Adding what is essentially like a single fire, like that way you can just click, 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 and you can't like exactly drag, you know, your crosshair over an enemy during the burst, uh, which is a problem with the battle rifle is that at least the Halo Infinite battle rifle and to some extent previous battle rifles, they could reward more sloppy aim because you could essentially click and let the burst go and just swipe your crosshair over an enemy's head without directly aiming at them. And one of those shots in the burst will land. Uh, but with the DMR, there is a bit more of that, like, click, 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 you know, or pressing the trigger and having to time your shots. It's a more consistent and predictable firing pattern, I guess is the best way I can put it. Uh, and I've heard it's, it's helped quite a bit with uh, Big Team Battle's pacing. Uh, works better than the commando. Um, Bandit isn't too OP at range either. Yeah, the, the Bandit, it does seem more or less just kind of like the Halo Reach DMR or the Halo 5 Magnum. Like, just a a solid utility weapon. Probably the only thing it's missing is D-scope. Because while it's not, you know, like a sniper rifle, there is still range to it. And even though aiming down the sights doesn't give you a range buff, you know, or like accuracy buff, it does still provide visual clarity that helps you land your shots. So being able to knock people off, off your ass, having that mechanic there is better than not having it there, I'd say. Um, Doom 2016 or Halo 2? Oh, well, they're, they're such different games. Like, so different. They're on such different ends of the spectrum that it would be... That's like saying, what do you prefer, Rayman 3 or Age of Empires 2? Why in Halo 4 does every weapon sound like a nail gun? Well, it's, I talked to a sound designer actually about this. Uh, I'm not sure if he still works at Bungie. Uh, but the way he described it was with Bungie's sound design, they have really soft transients. So if you open up like the audio sounds for like Halo Reach's weapons, because um, that was like the latest Halo project before they went over to Destiny, What'll usually, what you usually see on the audio spectrum is a B 
build up to the peak and then a long fall off. So it's it's a bit of like a soft entrance and then the boom and then the tail the tail of the sound effect where with Halo 4 if you open it up in an audio editor it's just like silence boom immediate peak volume and it's loud and then has a sharp fall off there isn't like a very strong uh tail i guess and so what it leads to at least in in uh, motion is a lot of halo 4 sounds it does sound like like a hammer like a jackhammer it's these constant sudden sharp sound effects uh, and some of that might be due to 360 uh, engine limitations. Because um, the, the audio designer for Halo 4, Sotaro Tojima, um, he was not very familiar, I guess, with um, the way that the Halo engine's uh, audio codec worked, um, as well as like the weird ways that the Xbox 360 would compress sound effects. So the sounds he would design in the studio, they'd sound a lot different, a lot more uh, like scratchy in game and it was one of the the uh, things that he wanted to change going into Halo 5. Halo 4 aiming feels so good compared to Infinite. Yeah, yeah, right. Um I'm not sure what changed under the hood in the Halo engine between Halo 4 and Halo 5 because Halo 5 I think is the first Halo game where something felt like off in the aiming because of the the like tweaks. I forgot they um in one of the Vidocs for Halo 5, they talked about how they had, like, completely gutted the aiming system and rebuilt it because they wanted to make it, like, easier to use and better. And I I think something broke. Something that they still haven't found to this day because I'm not sure if you guys remember the uh, heavy aim bugs in Halo 5. How depending on system load, uh, rather than the frame rate dropping, your input delay would actually increase. Um, but a lot of the bugs in Halo 5's aiming system have, like, translated almost directly into Halo Infinite. And in, ca in some cases, I think Halo Infinite feels a little bit worse aiming-wise. Forgot about that man camera we're hiding back there. Oh. Um, okay, so that's why the Halo 3 and Reach sounds are quiet and so weak. Uh, well, Halo 3 sounds are quiet just because of the the odd audio mixing, the way that Halo Reach or Halo 3 was mixed. Uh, it's it's very it's very odd the way that they mixed that game. Um, Halo Reach, on the other hand, I don't think it's very quiet or weak sounding. I think Halo Reach actually has a, a strong audio presentation for an Xbox 360 title. Uh, what Halo Reach is missing, though, is at the time the Halo engine did not support... Um, I can't remember if it was, like, audio occlusion. It was either, like, audio occlusion or, like, um, not surround sound, but, like... trying to think of the way that I can put it into words. Um, why does the Spartan do a screaming animation when they activate an ability? Oh, like this? Like the little... Like, like powering up? Yeah, it's, it's silly. I assume... I'm not sure where the... the um, where the armor ability is located on the Spartan, but if it was coming, if it was like located on the central chest, then I guess that would make sense because you're like, you know, pumping the chest up so that you can like deploy the energy field around you. But hey, LNG, have you ever played Prey 2017? I got it for my birthday and it's a banger, dude. Prey 2017 is one of the best games of the last generation. Like. The, the immersive sim genre, which is what that type of video game is called, the immersive sim genre very rarely is a commercial success, which sucks. Um, but I don't think there really is any bad immersive sims. Like, they're usually all incredible just because it is, well, it's hella immersive.
what the fuck is the echo inside of the bubble? Oh yeah, when you deploy the bubble and it sounds like everything's been a bit crushed. Yeah, that was a that was. I'm not sure that's an Xbox 360 limitation. I think that's just bad sound design. Halo 5 was a pretty major had a has a pretty major aim update a few months in. Halo 5's default aim acceleration was 3, and they said the closest to the previous titles was aim acceleration 2, but I remember even pre-launch with Halo 5, something they said aiming felt weird. No, they, they did do a... What they found was at launch, there was a dead zone issue with Halo 5, where um, if I remember, it was either the right or the left was not as sensitive. So you actually turn slower in one direction than you did the other. So they had to release an update to fix that, as well as give people the option to edit their dead zones themselves. But what happened was a couple years later, somebody made a major discovery. Because, like, for the most part, like, Halo 5 has always been a game where it's either super responsive or it almost feels like you're playing with with like a second of lag you know you're aiming like you're you're boom 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 shooting and you feel like you can't keep up with the heads of enemies like your controller just isn't responding uh and turns out that's exactly what was happening uh depending on the map depending on the performance of the game uh depending on where you're looking on a map uh if halo if the engine is being taxed too hard it would actually drop uh, your input responsiveness, as well as your aim assist responsiveness. So really, on a map-per-map -map basis, your aim could be completely different in Halo 5. And the community called it the heavy aim bug. Uh, and 343 deployed a fix that they hoped would fix it, but it didn't. It just, you know, minimized it in some cases. Uh, and in Halo Infinite, the heavy aim bug is back with a vengeance. It's still here. They never fixed it. It's still in the engine. Uh, and it was introduced to the series ever since the jump from the Halo 5 beta to the final version of the game. Something to do with the way that they uh, designed the engine. For the longest time, people theorized it might have been related to networking, like maybe aim assist, some of it was being calculated via Xbox Live, but you can experience aim assist even offline. And uh, what people have determined is it's something to do with just like the load of the engine, almost like how some games run in slow motion, uh, you know, where they drop frames when they're under load. Uh, for Halo 5, it would just drop your aim sensitivity, it would drop your uh, input input responsiveness. Does heavy aim happen on PC? Uh, for Halo Infinite, yes. Uh, as well as the Halo 5 Forge PC port. Although, because, you know, Halo 5 uh, Forge on PC, you know, you're running it on a PC, you'll probably experience it less, but you can still kind of, like, artificially enforce the heavy aim bug by deliberately playing Halo 5 Forge on a lower spec PC. Like, it's still there, just like the Xbox One. DMR and Halo 4 felt like an inferior battle rifle to me. That's that's the vibe I'm starting to get. Um, with Halo 4, they made a conscious decision uh, during production, and they, they actually showed it in like a slide. They made a conscious decision to kind of pivot away from the idea of, uh, of a weapons-filling kind of like very unique, very weird sandboxy niches like a plasma rifle. Well, is a plasma rifle like an assault rifle? No, it's its own thing. They decided to pivot away from that design philosophy and instead focus more on like, they look towards like the competition. So the idea was that you'd have Halo 4's sandbox was broken up into, uh, it was like submachine guns, assault rifles, tactical rifles, 
shotguns, explosives, melee weapons, and pistols, and snipers. I think that was the category, and every weapon had to fit into that bracket, like, very rigidly. Um, they play-tested, like, with some weapons. There was, like, a stasis rifle and stuff, and they, they um, found that people just were not playing with any weapon that didn't fit into that Call of Duty kind of weapon archetype. So they came up with this strict system of every weapon needs to fit this way, as well as it also benefited the create a class system that they were doing. Um, and so the DMR, if you think of it like that, as think of it less of like, where does it fit in the sandbox? Kind of like a more old school Halo game. And think of it more of like a Call of Duty create a class and you go over to the tactical rifle slot and you see battle rifle, DMR, light rifle. That's what the DMR is more supposed to be. So it's less of, you know, where how does this fit in the sandbox? And it's more of, what fire rate do you want? And that's really it. What is your favorite Master Chief design? Uh, maybe Halo, maybe Halo 2 or Halo 3, one of those two. I'd like Halo 2. You know what? Halo 2's, like, marketing Master Chief, I think, is probably the coolest. Because the in-game Master Chief, he looks a little bit silly sometimes, you know? But the ones that you would see on the posters, the ones you'd see in the art, like, that depiction of the Master Chief, I think, it might be my favorite. Twenty forty two five is too glitchy if you download on that. Yet yeah, twenty forty two. Um, if you're talking about the state of Battlefield twenty forty two, Battlefield twenty forty two is like pretty good now, which is weird to say. Battlefield five, on the other hand, I can't get it to load. It, it's like a black screen; it just won't load, and I I could not tell you why. Has anybody else experienced that issue in Battlefield five? Should I buy BF5 or 2042? Uh, BF5, I think, might be a little bit intense if you're playing on console. I think it plays better with a keyboard and mouse. Um, just because of the way that the control system is set up. Like, basically, you have to press up on the D-pad if you need, if you want to manually heal. Because uh, that's how you take out your med kits. As opposed to, like, Battlefield 2042, where it just, like, automatically regenerates your health. Um. Is it just me, or did Master Chief sound a little bit more nasally in Halo 2 than any any other game? Not sure about that, about Master Chief being nasally, but I do know that Jen Taylor had a cold while they were recording uh, Halo 2. So that's, you know, a bit of trivia. Thoughts on a Halo game with a couple of utility weapons, but alongside with an expansive sandbox? Yeah, go ahead, do it. Uh, that's the preferred way, at least that I would design a Halo sandbox. Because I think at Halo sandboxes, a as much as people don't like utility weapons, I do think Halo games are stronger when you start off with, this is the gun. This is the gun of the game. Whether it's a battle rifle or a DMR, and then you start building weapons around that. I think that's probably one of uh, Halo Infinite's actually biggest downfalls right now, is that the game doesn't really have a utility weapon. It's just kind of like, eh, eh, use whatever you want. And so people are really just gravitating towards whatever kills the fastest, which is like the assault rifle, battle rifle, and sidekick. 
uh, and then weapons that are a little bit too hard to use or too situational to use. Uh, kind of like the Mangler, they just began abusing it for its melee system. Like, not using it to shoot, because it's, it's too hard to shoot. Just use something that's easier to shoot. As opposed to if you did have that solid, like, well, this is the gun people are going to use most of the game. Then you can start being like, okay, got it. Now you build a whole bunch of other weapons around weird, interesting quirks, design philosophies and stuff. With the knowledge that, well, people aren't going to be trying to use this to get the most amount of kills. So why don't we just design this thing to be the most unusual, most interesting. Human versus Forerunner War Halo game. Thoughts? I think I've answered it before. I don't think that that idea has legs, unfortunately. And not not because it's a bad idea, but more think about trying to pitch that in, like, a marketing meeting with, like, Microsoft corporate suits. Like, trying to sell that. Like, they're coming in with their understanding of what Halo is, which is Halo is the game about the green guy. Uh, and then you're trying to pitch them this like Lord of the Rings style sci-fi experience where everybody is in weird Tron armor, they'd probably be like, how are we going to market this? Like, can one of them at least be green? You know, you already see the way that uh, modern Halo, it like, it just can't help itself but put Spartan this, Spartan that everywhere. So imagine trying to sell people on a Halo game with no Spartans. You might have been able to under Bungie, because we had Halo 3 ODST, but nowadays uh, Halo has sort of, like, shrunk. Like, as Halo has become less and less relevant, Microsoft has sort of turtled up around the more marketable elements of the Halo franchise, which are Spartans. And I don't think we'll, we'll ever get something like that, uh, at least not for the time being. Infinite sniper rifle seems difficult to use. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to fool around with it much since uh, they got rid of the recoil, the hip recoil. Uh, but yeah, infinite sniper. I can't tell if it's just like, you know, problems with the aiming system or what, but. Let's do this. We're never going to find out who the endless are, are we? No. We'll, we'll never find out who the Endless are. And whoever the Endless turn out to be, it'll be different from what the original idea was because all the people who came up with the Endless, they're not at 343 anymore. So it's going to be a completely new group of writers. So whatever the Endless turn out to be, it will not have been the original idea because it'll be a completely different uh, group of writers and devs. How would you fix the Spartan this, Spartan that problem with the Halo franchise? Uh, the way that I would probably do it is... Um, like, just the, the obsession and fixation on Spartans to the point that it's kind of like, you know, harming the variety of the Halo franchise. Uh, the way that I would probably do it is they've got to do, like, a Battle Royale of some kind. And the Battle Royale is not... You're not Spartans. You're Marines and ODSTs in the battle. Like, they've, they've got to come up with an idea that is very popular. Now, also, you know, unfortunately, this Battle Royale idea, it kind of hinges on the game being good and successful, which with 343, that's not a guarantee. Um, but if you can come up with, like, a fun, like, okay, what are the kids playing right now? They're playing extraction shooters and battle royales. Um, we're going to make a super addictive battle royale. We're going to seek out live designers at Apex Legends. We're going to, like, we're going to, uh, 
leech them away from like respawn entertainment like people who have been like looking at data analyzing player behaviors in these live service games for years and years and kind of like understand player psychology we're gonna get up off our feet and we're gonna make a battle royale with some really uh talented experts who know everything about player retention uh get some good gameplay systems in there and it's not gonna be spartan themed no spartans you're gonna be odsts and marines that way you expose a new generation of gamers to, like, the greater Halo universe to an extent. And you can start to kind of, like, detach. Kind of like, a, think of, like, Titanfall. Before Apex Legends, Titanfall, how would you even do that universe without Titans or pilots? Well, Apex Legends came out. And now, arguably, you know, pilots are, like, the least important aspect of the Titanfall universe, which is crazy. How would you describe Infinite's art style and which Halo does it resemble the most? Infinite's art style I would describe as being being a, a blur between Halo Combat Evolved and Halo Reaches. That's the way that I describe it. It's most similar to Halo Reach and Halo Combat. With with just, you know, some sprinklings of Halo 3 thrown in there. I disagree. BRs are on the way out. I, I wouldn't say that, man. Uh, BRs so far have shown no signs of slowing down. BRs that aren't doing well are showing signs of slowing down, such as Warzone 2. But the good ones, like Apex Legends, they're doing fine. Fortnite's doing fine. Protect your flag. Hmm. I feel like people would see a Halo BR without regen shields as a waste of effort. Well, that's why you want uh, this BR, this Halo hypothetical BR, to probably not be about Spartans. That way you don't have to worry about shields. Um, Apex Legends is part of Titanfall? It is. It is. They made another Warzone? Yes, there is now Warzone 2, or Warzone 2.0, I think they're calling it. Uh, and it is a, a new application attached to Modern Warfare 2. Uh, and it's currently not doing too hot, because they basically invalidated all of people's purchases. Which, you know, hey, that's why you don't buy microtransactions. Because that could happen. A couple years later, the game shuts down, and then all that money you spent is uh, pointless. That's why you buy things like story DLC, things that have playability and gameplay value. Hmm. I just want the Halo Wars 2 art style in an FPS. For the Banished, at least, yeah. Yeah, the Banished, that would be freaking awesome to see. Uh, and even, like, the, the grittiness of Halo Wars 2, 2's UNSC. Because Halo Infinite, uh, it's it does still have that, like, that 343 A-team problem where it's just their games look a little bit too clean for their own good. Uh, where's Lasky? Is he safe? Is he all right? I'm sure Lasky's fine. He'll probably show up in a book or something. Um, I really wish Halo Infinite had story DLC I could buy. Yeah, you and me both, man. It, it's it's mind blowing how badly uh, Halo Infinite was mishandled just from its conception. And going forward, like, whatever, you know, is going to happen with the Halo franchise. I hope it does well. I don't really have faith in Pierre Heinz. Um, I don't really have faith in 343. But, you know, maybe things will turn out okay.
but I, I'm erring on the side of we're probably in for a second or third Dark Age of Halo, <laughs> depending on <laughs> who you ask. How's After Effects? After Effects is freaking awesome, man. I'm finally starting to get into, like, the 3D visual effects and stuff. Uh, like, tracking. Uh, and that is a lot of fun. Can you imagine if Halo Infinite came out in 2020, like they originally planned? Yeah. Yeah, you, it would be even more unpolished and unfinished. How come you don't have faith in Pierre, or is it just not wanting to put trust in some magical savior? Just, you know, I don't, I don't want to put trust in a magical savior, and also, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'll just put it, I'll just put it this way, like. There could have been more qualified people who took over 343, and the fact that Pierre over those people was chosen worries me a lot. Um. Late Night Gaming, do you consider the sidekick in Halo Infinite to be part of the M6 Magnum lineage? I do consider the, ma the sidekick to be a Magnum for Halo, like a Halo pistol. I know it's technically not, you know, a Halo Magnum and M6, but it's, it's like, listen, there's no Magnum in Halo Infinite, but there's the sidekick thing. This is a replacement. So I just consider it to be the Magnum. 343 needs to stop catering to late 20-somethings and forge a fresh path that isn't held back by fanboys arguing over stuff no one else cares about. There definitely is truth to that. Uh, which is weird also because 343, they are currently going hardcore on trying to appeal to a fresh audience. Like this whole um, Elseworlds or whatever it's called, Fractures armor, that's not done for Halo fans. That's done to try to appeal to Fortnite kids. Um, same with like the rated T for Teen. Like that was done so that they can appeal Halo to a younger demographic. The sidekick is just better. Is just a better Halo 2 Magnum. Well, the yeah, the sidekick is sidekick's got a lot of problems. Uh, hmm. After watching your new edits, I'm very interested in After Effects now. How long did it take to create your weapon trailer? Uh, well, After Effects is a tool that you can use to create visual effects for a part of your video. So, like those three-dimensional cards, you know, where it's like the weapon name and it's like flickering and stuff, that probably... It, it took a couple of days for me to learn what I was doing, but after that, it would take about an hour probably to do each one. Maybe a little bit more if I was being very obsessive with the details. Three four three has been chasing a fresh audience for over ten years, and it's never worked. Yeah, there's definitely that issue, which is I don't think three four three has ever stopped trying to chase. It seems like they can't decide who their target audience is. Yeah, they um, they want Halo to appeal to a new audience, but they also want to spiritually bring Halo back to its roots. They want Halo to be new for a new generation, but also the same new. But different and it at some point like the two different things clash and you always end up in this weird confused middle ground where it is it is a, a weak facsimile of a bungee halo game and it's just not original enough to stand on its own legs as something new and that's just kind of like 343's curse over and over again 
Uh, Kevin Law says, was going to ask for your thoughts on 343's new management, but you answered that. Enjoy the $20. Haven't sent you anything in a while. Love your tools, trade, video, whatever happens at 343. I'm past the point of caring. Yeah, dude, uh, you and me both, man. Um, just, yeah, especially after the management shakeup. Say what you want about Bonnie Ross and the way that she ran 343. Bonnie Ross, she cared more about the cre about creatives than she did the business side, sometimes to a fault. Uh, but I think what 343 has done now with Pierre is they've overcorrected, and now what they just have are producers and businessmen running the studio and not a lot of creatives. And uh, that, that doesn't inspire me with confidence for the future. That I feel like Halo is going to become a very product-like franchise going forward. In other words, 343 is always lukewarm, never committed. Sort of, maybe not lukewarm, I'd say almost anxious is the best way I can do it. It's, you know, obviously wanting to do something different, but always being too anxious to fully do something different. So they always strike these middle grounds that kind of never makes anybody happy. If you could have put anybody in charge of 343 when Bonnie Ross, who would you have picked? Oh, dude, uh, Joe Staten. I know that that's probably a very generic answer, but definitely Joe Staten. But even then, I'm not even sure if, like, you know... I just don't know if, like the Halo franchise and kind of like the creativity that the Halo franchise demands is something that's even possible under Microsoft. Just the way that Microsoft piecemeal develops games. They're not very creator driven. Microsoft is more business uh, driven. Halo Reach has the best Master Chief. Changed my mind. Well, Halo Reach has a has a fun Master Chief firefight. Do you think Joe would have accepted? I'm positive that Joe Staten was probably hoping he'd be put in charge of the studio. And I'm sure that uh, Matt Booty kind of going behind his back and putting Pierre Heinz in charge, that probably took him completely by surprise. If they wanted to do something different, then the Halo universe is ripe for non-Master Chief adventures and stories that are grounds for experimentation. What they could totally do is they could probably do like a couple of prequels, I'd say. Like probably slow down uh, slow down on kind of like uh, the current stuff going on and maybe, you know, have some Halo games set during the Human Covenant War like long ago. Uh, why did Joe leave again? Because wasn't he always a temporary guy? No. Uh, he is known to be a temporary guy, but him going to 343, that was not with the intention of him leaving at some point. Uh, he was very much there to stay. He was very much looking forward to getting started on the next Master Chief adventure. Uh, and then suddenly Pierre Heinz was put in charge. And a lot of corporate uh, political nonsense happening behind the scenes. And I don't mean politics in CNN and Fox News. I mean corporate, corporate nonsense, the kind of stuff that makes you, like, want to give up on the video game industry. <laughs> I 
Metal Gear Rising style. An ODST or Marine game focused in 2540s would go really hard. What is the 2540s? Is that like Halo Wars time or was that like 2530s? Uh, turn some of the books into games? Yeah, you could totally do that. I feel like a lot of people said that Contact Harvest would probably make for an awesome game. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Lockheed Martin. <laughs> the Vic Burger edit is so good. <laughs> the invisible jet Vic Burger, that's such a good edit. I freaking love that video. <laughs> makes more sense because it really confused me why he left. Yeah, he, he uh, did not leave of his own accord. He was told that he was going to be leaving. He was part of the, uh, the layoffs at 343 Industries. Just instead of being laid off, he was allowed to return to Microsoft Publishing. Or Xbox Publishing, I should say. Which kind of sucks, because that's almost like the second um, time that Joe stayed and I guess was like kind of stabbed in the back. Uh, the, not stabbed in the back, but like the disappointment happens in the workplace, you know, where he's very enthusiastic and hyped about something, and then it all collapses. First time is with Destiny and his original pitch for the Destiny story to Bungie, and then now with... Uh, 343 Industries and future Halo uh, campaign content being deprioritized as they try to cut costs. Hello, please answer this, but do you think you could forgive everything if they added split screen to Halo Infinite? No. It would be one of those things where it would just be like like, they should have done it in the first place. I'm not going to congratulate them, you know? Split screen doesn't fix the other dozens of issues, sadly. Yeah, exactly. Split screen is just one issue on the long, long, long Number list one. of issues. We're gonna hop over to some Halo loot chat for this right away. We're gonna try Invasion because I need footage of the original DMR. And currently Invasion is the only place where you can experience the original Reach DMR. Because uh, the title update DMR, that's that's not the one that I want to talk about. I don't like the title update for Halo Reach. Like, as annoying as Bloom is and uh, m the lack of melee bleed through for Halo Reach, that was still the way that the sandbox was designed and balanced. And I think what the title Enemy update one, did was it just kind of, like, broke the balancing in the sandbox of Halo Reach. Um, I feel like a lot of Infinite's issues, even if they do get fixed, people kind of don't care for them anymore. It's too late to fix everything. Yeah, that's, um, that's the level of apathy that I'm at now. Part of the reason that I just, like, I don't, I don't care about Halo Infinite. I don't really care about Infection coming out. You know, or Firefight. Like, it's just they took too long. You know? They took too long. That's ultimately it at the end of the day. Like, yeah, it'll be nice when they're added, I, but it's, you know, I should have been playing it over a year ago.
If you were to discourage camping in a movement shooter, how would you do it? Personally, I would implement aim assist or bullet size based on player velocity. If you were to discourage camping in a movement shooter, what's a movement shooter? Like Titanfall? Um, I'd discourage camping probably by having like a projectile system. That way, if you don't want to get shot, you got to keep moving, you know, and kind of like outrunning everybody else and, you know, dodging and stuff. Because if you're sitting still, it's very easy for players to land shots on you. Yeah. Let's go over to multiplayer. If any of you guys are currently playing MCC, I'm going to go search an invasion. Halo Infinite has the best forge, and yet I don't care about it in the slightest, unlike every other forge that was in Halo. Halo 5 update included. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Dude, even the forge mode doesn't excite me, and that sucks, because forge is everything I wished it would be. Uh... Have you seen the High Ground Animations fan-made Clone Wars movies making? It looks just like Season 7. I think I did see that. That, that was pretty cool. Um, Miku wants to be noticed, um, which I have just done. Uh, hmm. You could change the health system to encourage getting into fights instead of hiding in cover. You could do that. You could have it be like, um, bring back the finite health system, uh, but make it every time you kill a player, they drop a, a combat evolved health pack, and you have to run over it to get a, back your health. Whew. There's a timeline out there where Infinite's launch date had the content of Season 2, and the second season came out three months later with a large portion of content, too. Just hope I wake up there one day. Well, there, I'd say there's also a universe out there where Halo Infinite uh, just released with, you know, content parody uh, with Halo Reach, you know? Season 2 of Halo Infinite, I don't care about the game's still unfinished but there's got to be a universe out there where halo infinite had firefight infection split screen campaign and all of that on launch and a progression system i think halo infinite spartan textures are amazing it makes them look real yeah dude um halo infinite's assets are incredible and it like the the current version of the Slip Space Engine, I don't think, does it justice how good Halo Infinite's asset quality is. Have you seen Soda's Halo Reach movie? It was incredible. I did see. Dude, though, th that was really, really good. Yeah, Soda's uh, Halo Reach animation. That was incredible. Incredibly well handled. I really liked that a lot. Soda's W. Yeah, Soda's is Soda's is W. And isn't he now working on a on a um a fallout? A fallout thing? Hmm. I'm trying to look and see if I don't think I brought water in here and it's getting hot. Soda! Hang on, guys. I'm going to go get a water quickly while I search, okay? Uh, is there a reason for full screen over borderless window? At least for the for the uh, Steam release, there is slightly less input delay when you set it to full screen versus borderless window. That's why...
clothe. Uh, hydration. Will you please read my chat? Uh, Pepsi is the goat. Pepsi is the goat. Um, Pepsi's pretty good. I like it better than Coke. Ah, but what we are currently drinking is not Pepsi nor Coke, uh, for it is grape f grapefruit flavored Bellevue uh, water. All of the non Halo Three playlists seem dead to me. Well, I don't. I don't blame people for not playing the Invasion playlist. It was dumb of 343 to put it in ranked uh, on MCC, and I also think it was a huge missed opportunity to refresh Invasion with community-created content, because Bungie's Invasion was really good, but after 10 years of playing it, over 10 years, we have found all of the cracks in the game mode, and those cracks have not been fixed. Mm. Recently, I've been taking a friend of mine through the Halo games for the first time. What do you think are some of the most important things to show him? Specifically, more niche things. We just started Halo 2. Hmm. Uh, more niche things. What do you mean? Like, uh, things in the game to show him? Hmm. Can you elaborate on cracks in the game mode? Certainly. I mean, like, just inherent design flaws with the sandbox, with the spawns. Think of, um, Boneyard. Is it Boneyard? Uh, for invasion. The way that the elites are at such an inherent disadvantage that most Boneyard matches in invasion end with the Spartans just spawn camping the elites and assassinating them right when they spawn in. Okay, so nobody's playing uh, Halo Reach Invasion, unfortunately. So we are going to go over to Title Update Slayer, which is not what I wanted to do, but... Ah! And also, I just think ranked invasion is not the way to do it. You shouldn't be, like, in forced into, like, ranked matchmaking for invasion. Invasion is a mode that kind of, you need to have, like, a more diverse uh, roster of teammates. It can't be all competitively balanced tryhards or the mode just becomes intolerable. Boneyard is the worst, more than Spire. Yeah, Bone Boneyard is busted on the MCC. Ah. You know what? Custom Games Browser Invasion, that's not a bad idea. We could give that a try. Yeah, stuff like random story uh, Easter eggs or more specific story details. I mean this because I'm already brewing a pretty brewing a pretty decent understanding in him. Uh, for Halo? I'm trying to think of what would be like a an interesting detail to notice, I guess. What I would say is around um around the time of Halo 2 and Halo 3. Halo 2 didn't do it quite as well, because I think that's around the time when Bungie started experimenting with it. Uh, was the idea of, like, out-of-the-map cinematic things happening. Like, think of, like, the the, um, the explosion of the Athens, I think it was. Uh, 
there's a lot of people that just walk past that and don't notice it. Or when you do your, your zero-g spacewalk, you can see, like, the giant prophet of uh, Regret's ship blow through Earth's defenses and, like, beeline for the planet. And a lot of people don't notice that. Revenge. Tie the leader. Double you know, or just, like, small little lead. moments of uh, gameplay where the AI have something to say and they really only talk if you slow down and listen to them but most people because we played the, the levels for so long will just blow past all the AI and they'll have to keep up with us so their AI dialogue doesn't play out I can't believe Sonic is dead. Yeah, I know, right? I can't believe Sega killed Sonic. Game the lead. Game the Poor lead. guy. Ooh, boy. We'll hide here. Halo 3 messed uh, up out of the map stuff sometimes. There are tough triggers on Sabo Highway mer where Marines talk about the Mombasa elevator in the storm. Yeah, there, there. Are, Halo 3 is a game where almost uh, like a ton of like kind of important dialogue is actually that like blink and you'll miss it stuff. Like, Arbiter has a lot to say in Halo 3. Not a lot to say in the cutscenes, but a lot to say during gameplay. And it doesn't play unless you stop and kind of stick around and listen to them. Like, so usually in Halo levels, like, if Arbiter splits off from you and you meet up with him later, he'll usually have, like, an interesting conversation with the Marines, but just because of the pacing of Halo levels, most players won't stick around and, like, just stare at AI. Like, they'll just, like, move on ahead. Yeah, man, hey man, just wanted to say I love your channel and content. Happy to catch your live stream, says Joe. Happy to have you here, Joe. We're we're talking about DMRs. We're talking about invasion. Oh boy. You know, one big failure I think of invasion, uh, and I'm not sure how you could balance it out. Balance it out. I think it's the the asymmetrical concept of it. Like Halo just is not an asymmetrical hero type shooter. And unfortunately Invasion was probably as close to being an asymmetrical hero shooter as Halo will ever be. And I think some of the problems with that do definitely show cuz like the way that Halo balances itself, you know, is that you do have, like, the DMR as the keystone weapon, and then every other weapon is kind of balanced around it. I mean, you do have the needle rifle, but I don't think the needle rifle is as comparable. And it's just kind of like, uh, what, what do you do with the Covenant? Because the UNSC have some of the most important weapons in the sandbox, versus the Covenant, where Covenant weapons are more designed to be fired at the player by AI. Your teammates are trying to kill you. I think you have stream snipers. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. We're still kicking ass, and they don't have aim assist, so they can try as much as they'd like. They're not going to be able to kill me. There we go. 
honestly, the DMR is mid. What do you think is your favorite, uh, your favorite utility weapon in the Halo? Are you, like, a battle rifle person? Are you a magnum person? Or are you a DMR person? Kill. Well, I didn't get that double kill. That was just me cleaning up somebody else's work. Come on. Is that the stream sniper? Yeah. Halo is really good at asymmetrical gameplay. Just look at Infection. It is good at asymmetrical gameplay, but not... Not in, like, Slayer-type, like, the, the rules have to be very, very different. It, like, Infection, that's one thing, because that's, well, that's, like, the Infection game type. But something that's more objective-focused, where you've got Elites versus Spartans, I don't know. You, you'd have to probably really, really, really design it differently, to the point where Elites just have a completely different health system than the Spartans. And damage system too. And at that point, you'd be breaking it up into almost like, depending on who, which team you play as, it would feel like a completely different shooter. And I'm not sure if people would be too up for that, because even like Halo Reach, it tried to sort of have it both ways, where it was like, okay, like the elites feel sort of, they feel sort of like Spartans. Uh, but they just have, like, one extra shield point, you know? Like, that's about as comfortable as Bungie got with m separating the Elite gameplay from the Spartan gameplay. Would Halo 5's invasion-like mode fix some of Reach's invasion issue? You mean, uh, what was it? The, the asymmetrical war zone? Well, war zone has, like, a completely different issue, which is you can just have whatever you want whenever you want, you know, via its loadout system. So with that, balancing is kind of thrown out the window. I'm trying to think of how, like, invasion could probably be redone. Invasion would have fallen flat if it weren't the armor abilities. They kind of changed the entire feel of the mode, even vehicles having more unique roles in the game. Yeah, armor abilities were probably the closest thing they could do, like having the elites like dodging and stuff while the Spartans sprinted. I'm just, I'm not sure. Hmm. Why does infinite have tiny reticles? Well, infinite's reticles scale with your field of view. So the higher your field of view, the smar sm bleh, smaller your retic reticle will be. Uh, here, let's look at the custom games browser and see if anybody's playing Invasion. Here, in fact, you know what we could probably do? Create. Halo Reach. Uh, session name. Here, if you guys want to join. Invasion. LNG. Actually, you know what? We don't need Invasion, do we? We could just have, like, regular uh, DMR. Slayer. What do you guys think? Max players. We'll set it to like 10 and we'll do like free for all. What do you think? How do I change this?
We're going to do free-for-all Slayer with DMRs, okay? How does that sound? Okay. Well, none of these are working. Okay, not title update oddball. We want... There we go. Continue. Create match. Wait, no. I've never created a, uh, a custom match in the custom games browser before, so this is a very interesting experience for me. A little bit disorganized. Okay, this is teams off. Okay, now how do I customize? Or can I not do it here? Okay. Now create match. Okay, awesome. We're good to go. Um, but LNG, I made invasion for you. Oh no. Did you? <laughs> I'm sorry if you did. We could check that out after this. Custom. LNG does not read comments confirmed. I don't read comments. Here, let me let me leave this immediately. Okay, let's check out filters. Back. Multiplayer. Custom games browser. Filters. Tags. Ah. Uh. Okay, Halo Reach, Game Categories. Okay, let's get Invasion going. Yeah, there they are. Okay. Hmm, let's see. Which one is it that you had going? In fact, which one looks interesting to all of you? I don't want to, like, s snipe and take over any of these if, like, these are, like, people who are recruiting for clans. Oh, hey, Late Night. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to bet that's yours. Okay, we're joining Hey, Late Night. All right. Uh, have you played the Ultimate Sand Trap Firefight mod? It's amazing in terms of sandbox and enemy variety. That it is. That it is. Uh-oh. Where's the DMR? In fact, where am I on the map? Teammate gain. Let's see if the DMR is up here. Teammate gain. I think these rules might be a little bit scuffed. Okay, there's an elite spawning down there. Oh, there we go. Okay, match might be starting now. Yeah, Ultimate Sand Trap Firefight mod is pretty great. It's probably still, like, one of the best mods available right now for the MCC. Just in terms of variety. I feel like Late Night doesn't play MCC Invasion all that often. Slayer. Oh no, I play MCC quite a bit. The problem is uh, I do not play the custom games browser all that much. Destination, move. And I ought to probably learn how to play more. Where, where are the Spartans? Are they on that side? Okay.
this is invasion slip. Yeah, this this isn't the mode with the DMR, which is what I need. The Mythic mod for Halo Reach is good. Yeah, the Halo Reach Mythic is also pretty good. Like, any of those Mythic mods are pretty fantastic. By Mythic Shaki. What I'm really hoping for is for people to really start sinking their teeth into the Halo 4 and Halo Reach mod tools. And really start crafting some cool stuff. Because so far, we're, we're just getting a lot of uh, Halo 3 mods. And some of them are, like, pretty simplistic. It's usually uh, one that I saw that was somewhat impressive was somebody took um, took Snowbound and turned it into something of a campaign level, and that was pretty neat to see. So, like, people are getting more and more talented. But definitely, I hope soon we start seeing stuff on, like, the same level as, like, you know, your SPV3 type overhauls for some of those other games. I'm not even sure how difficult that would be. Move. The, the DMR comes later in Phase 2 for the Spartans. Does Invasion Slayer have phases of loadouts? What happened to Elite Slayer, man? Uh, I don't know. What happened to Elite Slayer is the same thing that happened to, uh, well, I guess the rest of the content from Bungie's Halo. Damn. The Halo 4 Reflow mod is pretty cool so far. I saw, I just downloaded the Halo 4 Reflow mod. And I oughta, I oughta, oughta check it out. In fact, we could probably end the stream with it if you guys would like. It's pretty neat. Almost beat down, LNG. Um, every twice, it, bleh, 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 every Game twenty-five or so kills is a new phase. Got it. Reinforcements. Okay. Lost the lead. Destination. Move. Jeez, I'm the lead. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. The Spartans have magnums and we just have plasma uh or er, repeater. Plasma repeaters. Tied the leader. Lost the lead. There we go. Okay, now we've got a precision weapon of our own. Lost the lead. Tied the leader. Gain the lead. Right. I'm gonna try some MCC on the Steam Deck. Let me know how it is, man. I'm super jealous of people who own the Steam Deck. Elite players in Reach have faster shield recharge time, but the actual recharging is slower. Yeah, there are there are very subtle differences between elites and uh, Spartan players. I feel like Invasion uh, would be prime material for a spin-off game. Because the mainline Halos, you don't want to turn them into, like, a crappy hero shooter where you have to escort a payload or something like that. You know, God forbid. Um, but a spin-off game, that's where you would probably have the creative liberty to start, like, radically redesigning the core gameplay to serve something like a hero shooter. And I feel like Invasion would be the perfect spot. Because even Invasion, the worst parts of Invasion, I think, are the parts where it kind of has to rigidly, rigidly stick uh, to the Halo formula. And if it was able to, you know, just break away 
Like, could you imagine uh, Spartans? They played more like Call of Duty, where they had sprinting, sliding, uh, aiming down the sights and all that stuff. But then for elites, uh, you didn't need to do aiming down the sights or anything. You can just fire from your hip with perfect accuracy. You could have, like, Battlefront-style uh, combat rolling. You could even, like, call in Covenant troops, you know? If you're an elite, you have a squad of grunts that will try to keep up with you. Uh, please answer, but do you think 343 is enough money to make a little spin-off and make some money? I don't think 343 uh, has the resources right now to make a spin-off game. They could probably contract a spin-off game, but in-house, I don't think they have the uh, the talent uh, to make a spin-off. And I don't mean talent to be mean. I mean, like, literally, they do not have the manpower. Th they do not have enough people who are in positions of creative talent to create a new video game. They'd need to hire new people, and right now, Microsoft, they're focused so heavily on, like, cost-cutting, downsizing, you know, tightening their belts for the, the speculated upcoming global recession that I doubt, uh... Oh, I think Pink Guy... Did you just let me kill you so that I could take your DMR? If you did that, friend, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I appreciate the DMR. So what you're saying is turning Halo into Battlefield. Sort of, yeah. Destination, move. Maybe going a little bit crazier. You know, these elites have the bullpup reload down. For a species that doesn't want to touch human technology, pretty damn good at operating human technology. Did you turn off game music? I did. Uh, that's for recording purposes. Territory captured. Sometimes I don't understand how 343 works. They have a lot of employees, but we get very little games. While a studio like Obsidian can release games every few years, it seems like recently. Yeah, 343, they, uh, it's unfortunate. Destination, move. Lost the lead. Tied the leader. Gained the lead. They have all the resources, all the drive the from their employees and the the management. The lead. Uh, Tied the leader. Could get Lost their heads the out of their lead. asses Tied and actually get to work. Lost the lead. And granted, now a lot of those same people who caused so many problems during Halo Infinite's development, they're no longer at the studio. But at this point, it's just like... So many failures now that it's just like, I don't... Even now that a lot of the uh, bad apples have left 343, it's like I still don't have faith in the studio's culture that it won't kind of like breed the next generation of... Uh, of leadership into like mini clones of those who came before. Is the bandit rifle considered a marksman rifle? I'd consider it so. I mean, uh, close to medium to semi long range, uh, precision weapon, headshot damage, like, it's a marksman rifle. Five minutes remaining. Tied the leader. Gain the lead. Could you do a stream where you just answer chats? I'm sure I could do Gain that. I don't lead. know how entertaining it would be, though. Um. Lost the lead. Ooh. Destination. Okay. How many
much about the inner workings of 343 do you actually know that you're not at liberty of sharing? Well, I probably couldn't say because I wouldn't be at liberty of sharing. So even if I did know more, I wouldn't be at liberty to say because I'd get in trouble for just saying that I can't say it, you know? Uh, but going forward, I'm not going to know a bit about 343 outside of just, like, you know, the friends that I talk to and stuff. Because I, uh, I left the Forerunner program uh, just probably two weeks ago. So I'm kind of joining all of you guys now here. I just want to give LNG my... I mean, damn <laughs> Do you think 343 could have a redemption arc, or do you think it's too late? <sighs> For me, it's too late. Like, I think the, the damage for the Halo brand is something that Halo is going to need to recover from for quite a few... It's going to need a, quite a while to recover from the damage that has been done to it, unfortunately. Like, just... Halo isn't the moneymaker anymore. You know, in far, as far as, like, Microsoft's uh, output, Halo is probably right now one of their least profitable franchises. Like... With a company that has Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, Grounded, um, now you've got Bethesda. Um, and there's probably an even bigger game that I'm not thinking about. In all of that, Halo is like way down the list in terms of money makers. You know, Halo takes a lot of money to create and there's only diminishing returns. You know, Halo 5 sold less than Halo 4. Halo Infinite sold less than Halo 5. And the production costs of these games is only getting bigger and bigger, but, like, you know, people actually seem, like, less and less interested in the Halo franchise as time goes on. And uh, somebody recently that I spoke to who's not at 343 anymore, but certainly was, you know, the way he put it was, yeah, Halo just doesn't make money anymore. I feel like the campaign team had a shift after the excavation mission. The rest of the game feels like it was designed by a new team that only had six months to get it done. Well, would you believe me if I said that the campaign, for the most part, was almost exactly as it was pitched? That there wasn't this kind of midway development reshuffling or anything? Like, obviously there is pre-production plans that are scrapped, but during the development of the game, like... It's kind of like, nope, that was that was how it was supposed to kind of turn out, unfortunately. And I agree that uh, that Forerunner mission, the Forerunner mission where you meet the Monitor and then meet the Harbinger, that's probably the worst mission, I think, in the game. Gears of War is down there as well. Yeah, Gears of War is another one where it's like a, more of a money pit. The games cost so much money to make, but they don't make that return you know minecraft easily easily outpaces halo and gears of war in terms of like monetization do they know it's their own fault halo isn't the cash cow or are the corporate suits still trying to figure that out there's definitely the corporate suits still trying to figure that out but there, there is also, I think, a, some of it is just that the creative vision behind the Halo franchise, they're not there. You know, one of, the, one of the most interesting ways that I've heard it put was created by Bungie, but maintained by 343. And that's kind of, I think, the way that a lot of people view Halo now. Where it's like, it was created by Bungie, but now it's just sort of maintained by 343. So it's kind of like, um, once Bungie departed Halo, everyone else just departed too. And now Halo is just sort of this franchise where it's still, they're still doing it, but it's, you know, clearly a different creative team. 
that aren't making the bangers that Bungie made. You know, and they had a chance with Joe Staten coming back to really kind of like revive that Bungie magic. Uh, but then, you know, we saw how that went. The monitors were the best part of Halo Infinite. Yeah, the monitors were great. I don't mean that the monitors were bad or that the characters were bad, more just like the pacing of the level. I thought Halo Infinite had 20 million players at launch. It had players at launch, but how many of those players spent money? You know, you could have 50 million players, but if only 200,000 of those actually spent money, that wouldn't be nearly enough. As someone who likes Destiny, I doubt current Bungie could make a new Halo game. Yeah, current Bungie is also so different. Like, current Bungie, uh, they, they are... Uh, current Bungie's... Current Bungie's weird. But there is still a bit of that old magic with current Bungie. It's just they, they've kind of, like, become a very different studio culturally. Uh... And even, unfortunately, to an extent with, like, you know, the way that they approach their games. I forgot, it was, it was a GDC talk where they said that one of the discoveries they had made in terms of live service content is that what's, what's more important is to get the content out the door and then fix it later than hold it back and make something really special. Because ultimately, with, like, how little patience gamers have nowadays, they just want the content. Teammate game. Uh, this talk sounds like a pretty good video idea. Would be healthy for the community to realize Halo doesn't need to be tied down to everything Bungie did a decade ago. It doesn't need to be tied down. Um, but I also think, you know, there's a lot of us who just want a good old Halo game. And we're never going to get that. And One so there's the constant rain. frustration every time that 343 makes a middle ground game. And it's just kind of this perpetual state of frustration until the eventual burnout. Oh! I think I just... I think TechPon just gave me his DMR. I appreciate it, man. Like, for me, definitely, I think emotionally, there's always going to be a part of me where I would not be able to accept something that is different. Remaining. I appreciate it, Tech Pawn. I really appreciate it, man. That's kind of you. There are people who are more willing to accept change. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people. I'm very stubborn. I don't like change. <laughs> if I could have my way, every single Halo remaining. campaign would have a Warthog run. Um, and I think that there are a lot of people who are also like that. So it's like almost 343 is damned if they do, damned if they don't. Um, Halo does not have the staying power that it used to have. Really, the only reason Halo is still relevant is because of nostalgia. Like, our generation has nostalgia for Halo. And as we get older and we lose interest in the Halo franchise... The Halo franchise will increasingly not Securing appeal to the new generation. And so Halo is just this, this franchise that's on the decline. Like, it's not growing, it's only shrinking, uh, and the crowd that it does appeal to, uh, they're losing patience. So unless Halo can figure out a way to reinvent itself and appeal to that new generation, I think Halo's on its way out the door. And do it in a way that also makes the old heads happy. And I think something they could definitely uh, do is take a take a look at how the Mandalorian rebooted Star Wars, because I feel like the um, the Disney trilogy. We've had this discussion before. The Disney Star Wars trilogy is probably a good case study where you've got like old Star Wars fans that miss the glory days of Star Wars, and the ego, you have new people who have no nostalgia for Star Wars. And so they tried to kind of, like, 
you know, spiritually reboot Star Wars with The Force Bravo, Awakens, and it, regardless of our opinions about that movie, as the series went on Disney's new Star Wars, they Bravo, just didn't attack. interest new viewers, and they began to lose the interest of the old Star Wars fans who were sticking around. Uh, and if it wasn't for the Mandalorian, then I think Star Wars would probably be in a very same, uh, very similar situation uh, to Star Wars. Like, Mandalorian was a perfect way to reboot Star Wars and get everybody back on board. The sequel trilogy discourse is more interesting than themselves. Maybe not interesting. I think it's frankly obnoxious. I saw in my uh, in my YouTube recommendations a two-hour uh, two one of those like two-hour breakdowns where it was like Disney Star Wars, the anti-trilogy, and it was just like like. It reminded me of when, like, The Last Jedi came out, and you had those, like, an unbridled rage four-hour breakdown of why I didn't like Ryan Johnson's movie, and it, it's like, this is Alpha longer than the movie itself. Oh my god. Revenge. Killjoy. Bravo, under attack. Probably one of the best parts about watching Star Wars with Rebecca is that we didn't have to have the Star Wars discourse. Uh, Rebecca and I, we were just like, Star Wars movie. And we just watched the Star Wars movies and took them at face value. Even though Rebecca and I do agree that <laughs> plugging Palpatine into the big machine <laughs> it was very silly. <laughs> and the fact that his clone was old and creepy, even though that's not how cloning works. <laughs> What if Halo, if Halo did a hard reboot, it would kill more fans' interest in Halo? Yeah, Halo can't do a hard uh, reboot. You know what Halo could totally do? Here, Here's my pitch, my Mandalorian pitch for Halo. Um, Halo is not growing, Halo's only shrinking. Um, the only people who still care about Halo are people who are nostalgic about Halo. Uh, and 343 is not doing a brilliant job at appealing to those people. So, here's how you basically do the Mandalorian approach and reboot the franchise. Come up with a new combat doctrine for the franchise. So, where, okay, Spartans and Master Chief, I associate, they're basically like the Skywalkers. And you want to do something like the Mandalorian where you want to get away from the Spartans and focus on a different aspect of the Halo universe to work with your reboot. Um, I'd focus on ODSTs, and I'd come up with a combat doctrine for campaigns for multiplayer. Like, here is basically for this reboot of Halo, here's the new gameplay philosophy. It's going to be very different from Bungie's philosophy. It's going to have a different gameplay style, different sandbox style, different movement. That way, when you've got people that are kind of like, um, you know, with Halo 5 or Halo 4, there's enough bungee in there to where you can complain about the sandbox in relation to how bungee would have done it. But if you do it so different, then there isn't a lot of room to complain. You have to almost, like, judge the game on its own merits, you know? Spaceship show. I love the RE4 remake to death, but it makes me kind of sad too because there will never be a Combat Evolved to Reach remake under 343 that'll even be half as good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't trust uh, 343, unfortunately, to do a decent Combat Evolved remake. <laughs> So Call of Duty with aliens. N doesn't it have to be Call of Duty with aliens? 
It doesn't need to play like Call of Duty. It can play like something completely different. It doesn't even need to be a first-person shooter, you know? Banshee and Reach is OP. Yeah, the Banshee and Reach is pretty nice. One minute remaining. Core stolen. Call of Duty suffers Teammate from what the MCU game. suffers from now. No matter how little or a lot of money goes in, there will always be millions of people who will play no matter what, which always keeps the profits coming. Well, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know, man, because uh, the way the way that uh, the MCU is going, it seems like even the MCU is starting to see diminishing returns. Somebody said, what an awful idea. Only nostalgic people care, so do something completely different. That's, when you put it like that, I can see why that seems like Ten a bad idea, but eight. also consider what the Mandalorian did. Where it used nostalgia sparingly, but for the most part, like, there wasn't a lightsaber at any point in the Mandalorian season one outside, and even the dark saber, it's different enough. You know? Like, the franchise is on the decline. People are seeing the Master Chief, and they are associating it with bad 343 games. So pivot hard away from that stuff and do something completely new in the Halo universe. Got it. Warthog Racing game. <laughs> Uh, what are your views on the Halo 5 Arbiter armor? I think it has a very nice ancient Roman armor style. Yeah, the, the uh, Arbiter's armor in Halo uh, 5 is pretty cool looking. I even think it fits the body type very well. Destination, move. To be honest, mm, the MCU Phase 4 has, like, all the hours of the first three, but none of that time was used wisely. Yeah, see, seeing, like, like, I'm in this weird position now where I'm sort of almost, like, celebrating. Uh, celebrating the destruction of the MCU because I've gotten, like, so tired of MCU stuff. Uh, as well as, like, all the stories about uh, the way that they treat their visual effects artists is, like, gross. Like, extremely gross. Um, but... Justifying... Justify meaning to make it worth keeping Halo going for over a decade longer. Oh, God, yeah. No, at that point, I just want to do something new. I, I would not want to work on Halo. Lost the lead. Tied the leader. I feel like Halo, it's just like, it's just like squeezed dry, you know? There's not a lot of, like, directions that you can take in. Like, the Bungie stuff is, is done, but it's still going. They're still doing it. Uh, and as for the Reclaimer Saga fans, I feel like even they kind of like the franchise has been ruined for them because 343 just couldn't stick to an idea. And so at the end of the day, just like nobody's happy, everybody's miserable, and it seems like the franchise is kind of dead. Like even if the Endless did turn out to be a really cool idea, would anybody care at this point? Or would people just be like burned out by the constant drama? That it's almost kind of like the weaknesses of the studio are laid bare. Like the, the illusion, the magic of the video game is gone. And what people see is a disorganized studio desperately trying to... Uh, desperately trying to match Bungie's legacy. Hydrate for $1,000. MCU Phase 4 already has the problem of what's next. The need for constant content for Disney Plus made the problem worse. Yeah, even like the idea of content. You know? 
Yeah, Disney Plus. I don't like what it's what it's like done. I guess to the way that like things are being designed now. Like describing a story as content mm -hmm. is so like creepy and weird. Like at at some point, is the story worth telling, or is it just content? Like, it, it just maybe it's just me but it always makes my skin crawl the way that they describe new marvel shows or movies as the next batch of content it's just like these aren't stories that are demanding to be told because they come from a creative vision they're being told because they they fill a release window What if they did the Mandalorian Tied thing by remaking Halo 2's core Move. gameplay, but throwing Lost literally everything lead. else out? See, Tied I'd lead. love that. Lost I would love Tied that, but I... I feel like even then, I don't know, it wouldn't make people happy. Because it would be like, oh, it's kind of like a Bungie game, and now we start criticizing it like a Bungie game. And then you've got, you know, Reclaimer Saga fans that are like enhanced mobility stuff, and they start, you know, complaining about that stuff and it's just like it, it's too close to home and so everybody starts complaining versus if you did something that was so so wildly out of left field that it kind of takes everybody by surprise uh, oh god I never heard of that content thing yeah Yeah, it is creepy the way Disney describes, like, all of their Marvel stuff as just content. The next Halo thing is a mod? It could be. Although that also requires, like, you know, the suits at 343 to also pay attention to the modding scene, and I feel like they kind of, they kind of don't. Because what they with modding, that's free content. That's not monetizable. What they want is something super monetizable and marketable. It's like the same reason we'll probably never ever see, um, like a a Arma Milsim type Halo game because it's just not marketable enough, not monetizable enough. You know, they could backtrack from the Reclaimer Saga and go back to the roots of Bungie Halo. We could have a Halo game about the Insurrectionist War and have a three-way battle mid-story. We could, but it still wouldn't be Bungie, you know? And that, I think, is one of the core problems. I think that just for a lot of Halo fans, they won't be happy unless Bungie's back. And the sad reality is, like, even if Bungie came back, it wouldn't be the same Bungie. You wouldn't have Marty O'Donnell making the uh, music. You wouldn't have Joe Staten doing the story. You wouldn't have Jamie Griezmer working on Sandbox. The old, the old days are long and gone, and it's time for us to move forward. Why haven't they done a Halo Tactics game? Territory Gears of War game got that much. I think a, a Halo Tactics game with the ODST was pitched internally a couple of times at 343 over the last decade, but it was always uh, turned me down. Lost the lead. Reinforcements. Uh. Destination. 
a three four three would absolutely butcher the new boss in its direction. This one has lost the lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the lead. What was the idea of Bungie's Halo Four? They had lost um, the lead. I've only heard from one unreliable source. Uh, Bungie didn't have grand plans for a Halo 4. Like, they didn't have a design dock and everything. It was always just conversations. Uh, and this guy, I trust him occasionally, but sometimes he does confuse his own theorizing with. And the way he described it was they were discussing discussing the idea of merging the story of Halo into Marathon. So the idea was it would be, Halo 4 would be a very, very uh, obvious reboot of the Marathon IP, just with the Master Chief. Instead of, uh, I, forgot, I forgot the name of him, the security officer from Marathon. The 343 era music is honestly quite good, but Man Oh Man, Marty, and Salvatore made absolute magic. Yeah, Marty, Salvatore, Niall Rogers, C. Paul Johnson. It's just like that. The way that um, Marty O'Donnell and Salvatore approached music composition in levels, I don't think it's something that you had again after they left. Because nowadays, the way it is, is it's just kind of like composers write songs that are then handed off to level designers who place it in the levels where they want. As opposed to Marty O'Donnell, where there was a bit of micromanaging, even kind of overstepping his boundaries and deciding where the music would play in the levels to an, to an exhaustive uh, degree. Mjolnir Recon something something. Yeah, is the character from uh, from Marathon. I feel like video game composers are really important for a game in all aspects. UI, multiplayer, campaign, the whole facade. This is this is kind of like a bit of a of a, of a, a crazy uh, opinion that I have. I feel like in terms of like video games, uh, the music composer should also be the lead sound designer. Because I feel like um, you get the strongest audio design if you can have like the same guy, like basically rather than the guy making music Oh, and then over there is the guy recording gunshots and stuff. If you have one person who is in charge of the entire audio spectrum of the game, that way everything from the gunfire to the instruments is a tool that they can use to craft an atmosphere. Because that is a big part of like what I think the charm of like Bungie's audio design. Somebody described it as a Reach sounding weak earlier. I don't think it sounds weak. I think it sounds uh, musical, in a sense. Like, obviously, the guns don't sound like real guns. They don't have that cracky firepower to them. But when taking into account the sounds of the Spartans running around, the sounds of grenades going off, and the sound of, like, you know, Marty and Salvatore's music going on, like, all of the sounds fit. Versus, you know, some of, like, 343's games, where I think s sometimes, like, the, the sounds are just a little bit too loud. When old Bungie was asked if they would make a Marathon 4, they said it would just be a painting of Bungie developers kicking a horse, so I think they were even tired before combat evolved. Yeah. Well, they, they made, like, 
three back-to-back -back marathon games and then you know lo and behold they make halo one and then they're it's marathon two electric boogaloo like now you're gonna make an endless endless train of shooters set in the sci-fi universe just like marathon and then it's funny that they got free of Microsoft and they're like, finally, we're gonna make a new video game, something original, something fresh, and it's a sci-fi shooter. <laughs> Territory. Whatever their current video game is, uh, Matter or whatever they're calling it, like, I think there was like concept art that was revealed of it, and it looks like a like a sci-fi kingdom. I'm like. <laughs> To be honest, I feel like I'm at the point where I don't really care about a bungee game unless it's a first-person shooter. Destination, move. Game over. Old Bungie was as tight as a knot. Every department had some connection to the other, as seen in the Vidox with engineering, art, level design, music, etc. Modern games are just too big for that. There definitely is the case, and a case, though, can be made that that was not healthy, and partly why Invasion here I'm going to be uh, ending, or I'm going to be leaving if that's all right, guys, and we'll probably be wrapping up the stream. Uh, we will quickly check out Halo Reflow, Halo Four Reflow, but part part of the um, part of the uh, you know stories about Bungie's burnout was that you know you'd have too many people spread too thin because they they'd be in charge of everything you know because you'd get one guy who's working on sandbox who'd get his you know his, some of his mitts into uh, level design a little bit and then before you know it he becomes very important to getting levels finished and getting the sandbox finished and so he then has to crunch overtime to work two jobs that he accidentally signed up for. Did I... Did I click the right thing? Okay, good. Anti-cheat's off. Okay, Halo 4 reflow. Let's give Halo 4 reflow a try. Okay. I just want to make Late Night laugh, but he rarely sees my jokes. Um, what are the silly jokes that you've been making, Thunderman? Here, let me also turn... Okay, good. Music's off. How many ships made it through the loop? Plenty. Uh, Why? All right. We still need a ride home. Oh wow, the sprint's a lot faster, I think. Um, here, if you guys come up here, this even works in retail Halo 4. Uh, there is hidden goodies up here. Hey, it's the Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer Battle Rifle! Uh, and a blue storm rifle? And then, all the way up here should be a sniper. Nice! Look at that scope! Alright. It wasn't healthy, but it made good games. It can be made healthy with good management from higher ups, which old Bungie admittedly did not have, but neither does 343. Yeah. I think anything's possible. Um, do you think Gears of War walked so Fortnite could run? Uh, lots of original ideas, such as one-shot snipers and shotguns, sort of stem from Gears multiplayer. Um, I feel like Bungie is over dramatic about its talent, for lack of a better word. They were infamously over ambitious so. about combat evolved in Halo 2, and they always fall back on sci fi, as you said. Yeah, but Bungie, they are. Um, Bungie are very talented at cleaning up the mess. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Like, Bungie Halo games are are very good at hiding how disorganized they were behind the scenes. 
Because if you actually read the stories about what it took to make Bungie Halo games, it was like, uh, they could be read as like an essay on how not to organize your teams and how not to get projects done, you know? Okay. Interesting. It also, uh, unfortunately, has some of the issues of the Halo 2 Anniversary Sniper, the way the view model will, like, phase in and out of your hands if you walk around while reloading. That's pretty cool. That is that is so weird, seeing these Halo 2 Anniversary guns ported over to Halo Force campaign. And it's the same Halo Reach animations. That is cool. Okay. This is Warthog. That's a very apt description. Yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, where where Bungie's talent truly uh, comes from is their ability to uh, clean up the mess before the parents get home. But man, were their games good. Yeah, their games were pretty good. And I think it, it might come from just, like, really strong presentation. Because you ultimately, you did have, like, those those egomaniacs who also had a lot of talent, like Marty O'Donnell, uh, that were going crazy on sound design and micromanaging how the music was put into the games. And then you also had pretty solid combat loops and a focus on sandbox interactions, which makes the world feel a little bit more alive, the way critters interact with their environments. You know, boxes go flying everywhere and stuff. Uh, you know, and those, those give enough wiggle room for you to not notice how little sense the stories make sometimes. Because <laughs> you're just like, wow, that piano was really cool. <laughs> Scouting party. They found us. The battle rifle model is so clean and then the firing sound just makes it curse. Let me see what what's the firing sound? Oh, it's just the Halo 4 firing sound. Okay. Even the grunts got little updates. Oh, is just is this mechanically just the Halo 4 pistol. It's literally just a reskin. It might be just a reskin. Although I did read that there was also some like sandbox balance changes. This... This might not be the Halo 4 carbine. Yeah, the sprint animation is different. This might be the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer carbine. The, what gives it away, at least for me, is the walk animation. It's not the same as the Halo 4 walk animation. And then the transition to sprint is different. So this might just be the one ported over from Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer. Even though they do share the same uh, model. Okay, where'd that Magnum bounce off to? Halo Infinite DLC, Master Chief finds a Chozo Temple on Zeta Halo. D that would be pretty cool, right? Crossover stuff. You know what would be pretty dope uh, way to kind of... Wait, hang on. We got to check out those grunts. I saw really good textures on those grunts. Is this... Are these Halo 5 assets? These might be Halo 5 assets that were brought over into Halo 4. I mean, obviously, like, that grunt face, that's the Halo 4, but the, the tech suit... Maybe it just belongs to one of the grunt ranks, but it looks at least, like, higher quality... Huh, okay. 
That would be neat if people were, like, using AI upscaling to up some of the textures in Halo 4. Or, I don't know if maybe the higher quality textures are available in Halo 4 and they're, like, buried somewhere in the game's code. Only for the Xbox 360 to brutally, brutally compress it. I thought it was illegal to use Halo 5 mods. Probably. Um, except for the obvious flaws, like the plasma pistol. I actually think the weapons in Halo 4 perform fine. They just look and sound funny. Uh, yeah, they mostly performed reasonably acceptable. It's four, it's the space grunts. Okay, they just threw the space grunt tech suit on the Halo 4 bodies, got it. Okay. But I swear, like, there's more detail coming out of the bodies, at least. At least the armor. Maybe I just haven't played Halo 4 in a while. Oh boy. I wonder if under the hood there's still stuff uh, that allows grunt methane tanks to explode. Because that's one of the things that they had to cut from Halo 4, just because of, like, memory limitations. Because Halo 4 was around the time when, like, the poor Xbox 360 was, like, really, really, really showing its age. And so you had a lot of stuff that had to be cut from just, like, combat behavior, like being able to blow off their tanks and see them go flying around. Let's check out this... This ghost looks good. <laughs> wow. I'm still trying to get used to the fact that all of, like, the, the bloom was disabled, so it makes Halo 4 look... Like, listen, like, art, art discussions aside, Halo 4 was still designed with the bloom in mind, so when I boost the ghost, the, uh, the ghost effect... You know, like, the energy effects look kind of, like, empty, like they're missing something because the, uh, the bloom has just been completely yanked from them. Certainly a needler. Nothing really to add there. Let's pick up the concussion rifle. Okay, it's just the Halo 4 concussion rifle. No differences there. Um, Halo 4 really crutches on lots of smear, blur, and bloom that look good without burning the Xbox 360. It sucks that they they traded out the um, the object motion blur that a uh, reach had, as well as I think reach had pixel motion blur. At least how it was like the the edges of your screen would get motion blur when you were moving or turning the camera, but the center would stay uh, sharp, that way you had clear visibility. It's a technique that they refined and carried on into Destiny, and I think it looks really, really good in Destiny too. Let's see what's up here. Any interesting goodies? Nah, just the pistol and the magnum, and the assault rifle. Oh, the assault rifle got, got a, a new color by the looks of it. Okay, we'll take the pistol and we'll rock this for just a smidge. Um. If Halo 4 was released as an Xbox One launch title, it would have been received better. Well, it's hard to say if it was gonna stay exactly the same, like, the same, uh, philosophies, you know, for combat. Like, the multiplayer, at least, like, the loadouts. I'm sure there would have still been, like, a lot of backlash. I don't know if, like, the, the 
power of the Xbox One would have been enough to kind of save people's perceptions. But yeah, a lot of Halo 4, uh, its ambitions had to be scaled down just due to the 360. Like, they probably could have done a lot more with, like, uh, physics interactions. Physics could have probably been, like, a little bit more... Not that they were bad by any stretch, because Halo 4 reused a lot of, like, Reach's physics systems. Even Halo 5, in hindsight, the physics system isn't, like, that bad. It's just that, like, objects are not animated at the at the refresh rate of the game, so they look choppy, but they are still, like, flying everywhere as they should be. Uh, but then you get to Halo Infinite, and it's like, what happened to the physics system? I'll run a soft patch to it from the suit. Never know what might come in handy. What are your thoughts on centered versus lowered crosshair? For Halo, I preferred lowered crosshair. I just think that's the Halo look. Where's the DMR talk? We did a lot of DMR talking near the the uh, beginning of the stream, but we could return to the topic of the DMR. Would you guys, what would you categorize like the DMR's evolution as? Because obviously, like with Halo Reach, the DMR was basically supposed to be. It was like a return of the Magnum, the philosophy of like the Keystone weapon instead of a burst weapon like the battle rifle. It's this single shot weapon with a predictable firing pattern. Um, they didn't do three shot kill though, so they upped it to five shot kill. But then by Halo 4, you know, Halo Sandbox went in a different direction and it took on that more like weapon archetype design. So it was more about like, it's less about this is the plasma rifle, here's what it does to shields, and it's more about assault rifles, tactical rifles, pistols. Um, and so the, the DMR in Halo 4, the way I kind of would describe it is it was just... It wasn't about what it brought to the sandbox in a unique way, and it was more about uh, what fire rate is comfortable in your hands. Like, it's more down to personal preference if you use the gun rather than uh, its sandbox utility. But then Halo 5, they did try to get back a little bit to sandbox utility, but the way that they approached sandbox design in Halo 5 was by kind of merging the two philosophies so it was like weapons have sandbox roles but they have sandbox roles in that the submachine gun kills at this range if you want to kill at that range you have to pick up the assault rifle so be they began to like design more around uh, optimal ranges i guess than like sandbox utility if that makes any sense like interesting quirks or secondary options for using it and the, the Halo 5 DMR I'd almost describe as kind of like well, a marksman rifle. In fact, I'd probably, I'd wager that's why they removed the scope from the battle rifle, because they wanted uh, the DMR to be the ranged rifle with a scope. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. UNSC AI Cortana to infinity. Please respond. Didn't Bungie and Reach start the weapon range thing? I believe they mentioned it, but Reach still has a lot of weapons that are just classic Halo-y type weapons. Like, Halo Reach used some of that, but I wouldn't say that's what informed its sandbox philosophy, if that makes any sense. The DMR started as a high skill but finicky mistress. Reach uh, title update really lowered the gap in the ceiling and made it more consistent. Rest of the games didn't distinguish precision weapons enough. I'm not sure if I'd even say that the Reach DMR took skill. Because I'm, I'm not sure if like RNG Bloom is something I'd call skill, you know? 
That feels more of like a like a lazy man's way of getting out of having a in-depth projectile system where you have to lead shots. And it, it leaves uh, the door open for slot machine mechanics where it's like sometimes you'll win a gunfight not because of your skill but because the RNG spread decided to give you a headshot while you were spamming the trigger. And I feel like that's that's not fair for a competitive weapon to basically be like, sometimes it hits the head if you're spamming the trigger. Well done. This storm rifle is crazy, dude. Alright. I think we're about to get introduced to more weapons such as the rocket launcher shotgun and stuff. I always pick up the BR over the DMR if I have both options available. I don't know, but that's just what I prefer. In Halo 4, that's what I prefer as well, but that's just because the battle rifle in Halo 4 is super, super easy to use. Let's get to that terminus and find Infinity. What do you know about Infinity? Ooh. Not much. She was supposed to be massive, but the project is only in prototype in the map. Go. go. Uh, here's some assault rifle ammo. Uh, let's find that shotgun, because it's, it's the Halo 2 uh, anniversary shotgun that was added to this uh, campaign. No one appreciates how every Halo weapon is a different reticle, and when you dual wield, it combines the two reticles. Does it? I definitely didn't appreciate that until now. I prefer the DMR because it's single shot. There is definitely an argument that single shot is a little bit more skill oriented. I used to lean the other way, uh, but the discourse in Halo Infinite about the value of a single shot rifle has definitely, uh, I think, converted me over to the idea of a single shot weapon. Um, I have the same opinion about the Xbox One launch a bit. Uh, even if the game would have changed. The extra year of polish would have likely eased players' criticisms. I don't know who told Bonnie Ross to rush it, but I'm not happy with them. Says uh, Kevin Law. And thank you for the $20, man. I appreciate it. Um, Yeah, Halo 4's development cycle is super interesting. I think a lot of people, depending on who you talk to, Halo 4 was either one of the worst development experiences they've ever had on a game, or it was like smooth sailing. Uh, Jesse Snyder, who's the guy who invented Call of Duty's zombies mode for World at War, uh, and then had it basically, like, stolen from him by Treyarch Management, um, he actually went on to work at 343, and he had a pretty good time working on Halo 4 because he worked at Treyarch. So everything was better than working on a Call of Duty title to him. Uh, but then there are other people that do talk a lot about the problems with Halo 4, mainly like the poor documentation of the Bungie engine, um, as well as there was a pretty big creative shift that happened during Halo 4's development where um, the game's vision wasn't coming together, uh, and so the lead had to actually be removed from the project and replaced with a man by the name of Josh Holmes. And uh, he kind of got the project underway and ultimately over the finish line. Oh yeah. It is, it is still bonkers seeing these Halo 2 anniversary multiplayer assets in the Halo 4 engine. See if we can pop the banshee. No, it doesn't extend that far. Okay, we'll get the rocket. I want it to be. Uh, I want it to be petty. There we go. All right. 
Now let's pick up that, that battle rifle again. I swear the Bungie and I swear that Bungie and game engines run on black magic. Or the Bungie game engines. Uh, the Bungie engines don't run on black magic. They're just like most in-house engines. They're they're very, very, very specific. Uh, and kind of convoluted. I mean, once you know how it works, it makes sense, but, you know, explaining to somebody who's not familiar with your workflow how a bungee engine works is probably a nightmare and probably very, very weird. That's like, have you ever seen um, the video of the of the uh, Valve programmers venting to each other in the uh, code of Team Fortress 2 about how, like, insane <laughs> the Team Fortress 2 engine is under the hood? It's kind of like that. Changes here? No? Okay. I probably would have made the saw a darker shade of uh, metal. Like, make it almost, um... Because I feel like the saw, it's... it's. If you stare at the saw long enough, you start to see the Halo 2 machine gun turret in it. And I wonder if that was the intention, and that intention is lost by the brighter coloration. So I wonder if you recolored the saw to be dark metal, and then and then maybe maybe just to zero in a little bit more on that Halo 2 machine gun turret vibe, replace the round drum with a box magazine. Come on, ghost. Oh. He's dead. Alright. Let's go this way. Um, I've seen that video. It's wild. I wonder if Bungie or 343 ever made such comments, too. They probably have. In fact, there, there is a lot of, like, weird stuff hidden in Combat Evolved. Like, developer comments hidden in Combat Evolved. If you follow, like, Lord Zed on Twitter, uh, he shares quite a few of them, and they're pretty funny. Um, you into a Metroid Prime MCC campaign mod replay of Samus? I think I've seen it uh, on the workshop. Is it good? Uh, Inferno Plus describes the Halo 2 engine as being held together by duct tape and popsicle sticks. No. No, I know. I know that a lot of Halo monitors take a lot of issue with that Inferno Plus video because it's not. If that is true about the Halo 2 engine, then the Halo 2 engine, like, Halo 2 would be a dysfunctional mess. It would be crashing constantly. It would almost be like Halo Infinite. Um, Halo 2, the engine is fine. It's good. It's solid. It is not held together with popsicle sticks. It's held together with solid coding. The problem with the way that Inferno Plus went about that is he's modding the game without mod tools. So of course it's going to feel crazy to him. He's not actually using proper tools. They're moving all ground teams to secure the So a, a lot of Halo mod modders have taken issue with that. Because it implies that, like, the Halo 2 engine is messier than it actually is, which it isn't. The Halo 2 engine is competent. Marty doesn't play nice with management. That's probably why. Yeah, Marty, uh, Marty O'Donnell, to his detriment, unfortunately, is a man who's very honest. And it, it's, admirable, it's admirable, but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately... You know, it's probably why we won't see Marty work on a Halo game again. Just because the man's too honest for his own good. <laughs> he doesn't take any nonsense. This is the Halo 2 anniversary uh, animation set. Look how much faster it is. That's cool. Dude, look how fast the energy sword is now. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I recently replayed Infinite's campaign and Reach plus 3's campaign. The difference in projectile speed between Infinite and the games in the MCC is night and day. Come on, let's go get him. Yeah, look at this energy sword. Look how crazy that is. Oh boy. Right. Let's run up here. This might be the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer beam rifle. Just the way it's being held is what makes me think, at least. Yeah, and we're nearing the end of the level. Let's see what's up here. Those definitely aren't the Halo 2 Sniper Jackals. No, they're not the Halo 2 Sniper Jackals, but the Beam Rifle, I think, is the one from Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer. Just because of the way it's being held by the character, like the view model. This, I also think, is the Halo 2 Anniversary Fuel Rod Gun. Uh, the main reason he's still in game development is because he founded a studio that he's working at right now. He'd be untouchable otherwise. Um, I think he'd still be untouchable otherwise. Is Marty still working at High... I think it's, it's High Wire Games, right? Aren't they making Six Days in Felucia? Three four three beam rifle looks like a bass guitar. It looks like yeah, it does look kind of like a bass guitar. It also looks like a like a a a um. It looks like a focus rifle with a snail shell almost. Like the the profile of it reminds me a little bit more of a focus rifle than it does a beam rifle, doesn't it? That might just be like a holdover from Halo Reach because at the time you know. The focus rifle was the Covenant Sniper, you know, because Reach had just come out. And so when you build a sequel, you know, you kind of stylize it off of what came before. Alrighty, guys. Uh, that was good fun. Uh, I'm going to hop off so that I can get something to eat, uh, as well as the heat is starting to kill me. Um, but... This was good fun, guys, and thank you for the discussions about the DMR. Uh, I will get back to you in a few days on the progress for the evolution video. Alrighty, guys, you take care, okay?